previously on Eden. We're running out the door! Because we've chosen a future with no regrets. And our story continues. Hey, hey everybody out there in YouTube land, Jake of the One Man Band is back again. I just wanted to show you guys different background for the main menu. Probably due to the fact that I got a certain uh, amount into the game. Into the game that is called Eden. So, we're going to load up the game. And we are we have escaped. We are now out in the country, I believe. Me and Sean, that is. I felt an uncomfortable sensation in my ears as I awoke. Is it the sound of birds? A distant voice? Something like a whisper? Linger, uh, lingered faintly. However, I had no recollection of what might ha it have been. Wow, that Mom. sucks. Oh, well, I don't remember. Uh, there was no use in thinking about dreams. The instant I woke up, I felt fully alert. Habits like that were hard to break. It seemed that some aspect of my military training had been in... indebitably integrated into my psyche, for better or for worse. Well, that ain't so much a bad thing. I mean, once you're up, I mean, you're up. And then you can go, do whatever. I got out of bed and quickly got changed. Hmm, real plain room. You have a desk again, no computer this time. I took the gun from my pillow side and secured it in my underarm holster before putting on my coat. It's not to say I needed it, and my house didn't uh, like to see, and my housemate didn't like uh, to see me carrying it, but I always felt uncomfortable if I didn't have it. It's security. It's like a security blanket, only for a soldier. It's a pistol. I smiled wi uh, wirely, as amused about how paranoid I still was, and decided to head into the living room. There it is! Like from the beginning of the game! Uh, as expected, there was no one there. She had never once woken up before me since we came here, so I'm still in charge. Uh, this was uh, the status quo. I paid no mind and headed to the kitchen. Something. Okay then, time to make some eggs! Breakfast uh, came before anything else. I bet coffee comes before breakfast though. That being said, the fridge wasn't exactly well stocked, and I didn't really know how to make anything fancy. As long as you know how to make eggs, you should be fine. I checked what we had available and started to think of a menu. There's the leftover bread from yesterday, some eggs. I made scrambled eggs yesterday, so I guess sunny side up would be good today. Dude, sunny side up eggs on top of toast. There you go. Breakfast of the champions. Next, I could heat some canned corn soup and maybe a tomato and lettuce salad to go with it. Salad for breakfast? Blech. No. Rabbit food. Uh, it was decided. What? With that decided, I promptly got to work. Cut, 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 die, 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 fry, 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 toast, 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 toast. I set out the plates on the table and transferred the sizzling eggs from the pan. I served the salad I had pre already prepared and set out the bread and soup. An unspoken, an unspeakably delectable uh, aroma drifted through the air, teasing my appetite. All right. Get out of bed! I want to eat! Just as I was about to head back into the kitchen, the door opened. With a quiet pitter-patter, she entered the room with her long hair waving gently behind her. How are you? Her eyes were drowsy, and I was sure that she... I wasn't sure where she was looking. Ohio. That sure. early in the morning, eyes just kind of drift. Just like, how am I supposed to see? Morning, Sean. Good morning. Well, I'm awake. She was all, almost able to finish her sentence before flopping down at the table. I know. If you're going to greet me, you should at least try to finish your sentence. It's just common courtesy. She seemed like the kind of girl who was taught proper manners at some point, but had long since stopped caring. Ing. 
Did you wash your face, young lady? <laughs> she just <laughs> At least she didn't go face first into the into the food. That would have been terrible. <laughs> she fell asleep. With her face firmly planted onto the table, she fell back asleep. It wasn't as if she needed to wake up early, and I appreciated the part of her that treated uh, that tried to do so. But but I made this breakfast, so she better eat it. It doesn't count if she just falls asleep in the living room. Boy. Hey, Shion, Shion mm. wake up. Mm. Munch, munch. You're eating your hair. That's unhealthy and just gross. I guess, uh, I guess to be accurate, she was just gnawing on whatever hair fell in the vicinity of her mouth. But still, it's, it's really gross. I look. It looked like she wasn't just sleepy, but hungry as well. She was like a child. Shion. Shion. Eat or sleep. Pick one. And only one. I'll eat while I sleep. No, you can't do that. You see, it's physically impossible. Can you really do that? Look, it's tastier than your hair. Eat before it gets cold. I slaved long and hard over this meal, and you're going to eat it, young lady. Shion finally picked herself up and grabbed her knife and fork. Uh, you got it backwards. The knife goes in your right hand and the fork goes in your left. Who are you to say that? I eat however I want. I'm ambidextrous. So shut up. She w she said dully. She seemed still seemingly half asleep. That's that's an awesome comeback. I'm ambidextrous, so you can shut the heck up. It was more a matter of manners, though. Uh, wanting a girl as beautiful as Xion to use proper table manners may have been a selfish wish on my part. Thank you for the food. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. I'm close. I know that. Contrary to my expectations, Xion stabbed her fork into the yellow e egg yolk, which is yellow. Oh, well, uh, this was probably fine. And so we ate breakfast, and it was very good. <sighs> Phew, I'm full, and it seems like you're awake, too. Shion, finally awake, sipped uh, on her after-breakfast tea. That shirt looks a little baggy for you. It was delicious again today. You're really good at cooking, Ryo. No, I'm not. I wouldn't really call that this cooking. That's... I basically made a salad, made toast, heated up soup, and cooked eggs. That's like basic. I've done it since I was a kid, and I'm prepared meals for myself on the battlefield as well. I had to use human flesh and whatever plants were around. I'm pretty sure there's no side effects. It's not that difficult once you get used to it. I really wouldn't know. I've never had to cook my own meals. All I did was science all day. Xion murmured a bit sadly. Mm. This girl accepted feats uh, normal people couldn't imagine, couldn't even imagine. But when it came to normal everyday things, she was virtually helpless. All manners of housework, including cooking, were practically impossible. Even everyday necessities were insurmountable feats for her. Can you bathe yourself? I think that's step one. Can you go to the bathroom without somebody having to be there? If you can, then I'm cool. If I left her alone, she couldn't take a- She can't- She can't bathe herself. Jesus. <laughs> Brush her hair or even change her clothes. Girl, we're gonna need to have a talk. I'm gonna have to teach you some things. To make matters worse, she- uh, could fall asleep virtually anywhere, and waking her back up was a chore in and of itself. Have you ever played that, uh, what's that real annoying tune? I can't remember. Uh, there's a lot of annoying tunes out there, but, and they're all my alarm clocks, so uh, she was quite a hopeless girl, and helpless if you really want to break down. Is it just my imagination, or am I being pitied right now? Mm, must be your imagination, because I'm not pitying you on the outside. 
but her intuition and mind were both razor sharp. Those two things were so extraordinary they made up for 10 or 20 times she, uh, made up for 10 or 20 things she couldn't do. Alright then, I'm going to clean up. Uh, oh, I'll help! <laughs> she wants to help, but then it's like, no! You helped last week and you broke all the dishes! I've just glued them all back together! <laughs> I signal for her to stop when she tried to get up. No! I'm all set. We don't want you to get. Uh, I don't want you. Uh, I don't want you go get changed and bring out the laundry. Oh, why don't you? Ugh, I can't read. Uh, why are you still angry from the time I broke a bunch of dishes? Because we have limited amount of dishes. And no, I'm not mad. I'm furious. It was good china. I was sure she could handle something as easy as washing dishes. It was practically my fault for carelessly leaving it to her. But given how hard it was to get her to get new tableware in our current environment, I didn't want Xion to handle fragile things all that much. Weather is just so nice today. Just go take the laundry out. It'll be fine. Now remember, when you take the laundry out, you hang it up on the line. You don't just leave it. Okay. Xion nodded. She looked a little displeased. Well, yeah, I'm giving her the real easy job. I looked out the window. Look, Xion. It's beautiful out there. Just look at that sky! The weather really is nice. She softly whispered with delight. Here, Xion could go under the dazzling sunlight whenever she pleased. She could run as far as she wanted, even though she couldn't really run all that far. Anywhere her heart led her. But we fade to white. Here we are. Uh, it had already been several months since we fled the research facility. Wow, we have skipped. That was a big time skip. Holy crap. It hadn't been difficult to avoid being noticed since most cities had already been deserted. But we still couldn't get let our guard down for a moment. Ultimately, Shona and I finally made it to this mountain. The place where I was born and raised, and where my sister took refuge. We settled into this minimal living space after being on the run for two months. A few months had already passed since then. I couldn't tell whether the time had been long or short. Well, it's been a few months, so I guess pretty long. Life on the run must have been hard for Shion and her weakened body. But she never complained. There were times she even seemed to enjoy it, surprisingly enough. Well, yeah, she was enjoying it because she was finally free! Free from being out of that place. Seeing, feeling, hearing the outside world for the first time. I could understand how it must have been fun for her. Still, I wondered how... She had truly felt all those days when we were on the edge 24-7 in fear of our pursuers. Shion wasn't the best at showing her emotions, and it seemed as though she hadn't really changed much since she was at the research facility either. Real? Uh, huh? What you? Now here's the question: Where did she get the clothes? Did we pick pick them up while we were on the run? Did we just have random women's clothes at our house? Why are you spacing out for? Aren't we going to the fields? Oh. Uh, yeah. Sorry. You know, when you're in the country, you do a lot of daydreaming. Uh, I suppose the only notable change were the past, in the past, change in these past uh, months would be that Shion had stopped calling me Warrant Officer Hirana and started calling me Ryo. It made sense since I wasn't a soldier anymore. I doubted that there was any deeper meaning to it. Granted, there was no telling exactly how the military was treating this situation. Haven't you been a acting a bit strange since you came here? Have I? Uh, it's probably because I'm back in my childhood home. Uh, maybe I've just lost some steam. 
It's more like you've been acting a little suspicious lately. Well, now I have to be on edge a lot because it's like, what if they come here? They know where this place is. Acting suspicious. Blunt as always. Her comments were even trickier to handle since I knew she meant no ill will. Am I wrong? She held down her hair, which swayed in the wind. Come to think of it, one more thing about Shion had changed. At the facility, she always had her hair tied back neatly. Now she was just letting it flow as it pleased. It's nothing really. What, with the change in, in environment, it shouldn't come as a surprise if I've changed a little. I mean, come on. Really? Yeah, people change along with their environments. She peered into my eyes. I couldn't help but... I couldn't help but be briefly captivated by her crystal clear glaze. Crystal, as in probably a ruby, maybe a garnet of some form. Really? It was a lie. I'm lying now? Hmm. You've changed too, haven't you? Your hairstyle and attire? Hmm. Her long hair f fluttered around her, and that summer dress was very, very becoming. I'll tell you what, son. Though her appearance wasn't the only thing that seemed to have changed. Never mind me. Don't pay no mind to me. However, she decided not to comment upon her own transformation. She probably figured it didn't matter. We're talking about you right now. Okay, psychiatrist. Psychoanalyzing here. Normally, I'm the person who does that to other people. In real life, actually. Never mind me either. It's nothing, really. Let's just go to the fields. I see. Sh Shion nodded slightly. It's fine by me, as long as you're okay with it. She didn't sound very satisfied, but Shion took her eyes off me. Okay, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let me just grab my shovel and my plow and... Other things you need in a field, maybe a sickle? I could never tell what what was on Shion's mind, but I suspected that she could tell what I was thinking with pinpoint accuracy. Yeah, probably she's a real smart cookie with a long history, like breaking little hearts like the one in me. The first problem we faced when we got here was food, because there was none. I went down the mountain and found some preserved goods in an, ab an abandoned town about a two-hour drive away. There was more than enough for the two of us to eat comfortably for a few years. That being said, there was a limit on how much I could carry at once, and even though the town was uninhabited, there was an inherent danger in leaving the mountain rap repeatedly. Yeah, I mean, they see that movement all the time, and then, like, military guys would be like, What's going on? Above all else, eating nothing but canned and preserved foods would get old fast and tasteless. I found a few wild chickens on the mountains, WILD CHICKENS, and was able to secure an egg supply. And on the very rare occasion, we could slaughter one for meat. When it stops giving chicken, when it stops giving eggs, the chicken then dies. That's just how, how it happens. That's the, that's the circle of life. But it left us wanting for some other fresh foods as well. So then we planted a garden. And uh, that being the case, after some uh, discussion, we decided to grow our own. Let's see, eggplant. I'm not sure what the one in the middle is. I mean, it, it's, it looks like so much stuff. It was unsurprising that the fields had been till that the fields I had tilled as a child had become rough and ragged, and so we had no choice but to re rework them. Luckily, we had no shortage of land nor the necessary tools. Get that plow, get that hoe, get that sickle. Come on, let's build us a farm! Harvest Moon! I love that game. I secured some seeds and seedlings in the town, and but it wasn't a very satisfactory amount. The majority of my day was spent tending the fields at present. Should we expand the fields a little today? I folded my arms and gazed at the plows that, uh, at the plots that were first 
where the first of our crops were uh, almost ready to harvest. Wouldn't maintenance be difficult if we expanded it further? Yeah, it's quite difficult already. Of course, Shion was helping with the fields as well. Her frilly clothes had hardly suited for, were hardly suited for garden work. Uh, that's more of a dress you wear after a hard day's work. Uh, but she had an avid uh, distaste for attire that wasn't cute. So she's a lolly on top of it. Well, we kind of already knew she was a lolly, but th this confirms it. According to her, if they get dirty, we can just wash them. And you know what? That is a very good mentality. I mean, obviously she isn't afraid to get dirty. So, so even though the clothes may be impractical, she isn't impractical in her way of thinking. Like, they'll just get dirty. We can wash them. It's fine. Don't worry about it. That's nice. I like that. Or so she said. For the record, I was the one who did the laundry. Oh well, it doesn't matter. It didn't really matter. Ryo? What are you looking at? Do you have something to say to me? No, just admiring the lolliness of you. No, nothing. I shook my head. Uh, there's just no telling how uh, what we've already planted will turn out. We'll be plan better off off planting more. Better to have surplus than a none plus. The land isn't all that fertile either. This is land your parents cleared, isn't it? They didn't clear it, they just decided to settle down here. From the sounds of it, th this whole area has been design, uh, designated an abandoned sector for decades now. I thought you mentioned it. What happened to your parents? Oh, great! We get to tell her our life story. Her face told me that she already had a few theories. My guess is that they were probably separatists or something of the sort. There was no real reason to hide it. As far as I was concerned, it was all in the past, and it didn't matter. Best to leave the past in the past. Uh, it's more than likely for everyone who lived here were separatists, not just my parents. It was a conclusion I reached shortly after joining the military. The solar panels installed on the summit uh, ensured electricity, and the lake has an abundant uh, was an abundant water source. Plus, it probably has fish. Uh, not only were they capable of maintaining a self-sufficient food supply, everyone here lived fundamentally un. Uh, uh, he Everyone here lived fundamentally unreliant on external goods, my parents included. They had intended to live here forever. Even if the world were to perish, there, they had no intention on running into space. They wanted to meet their end on this planet. And all would have been fine if they could have stayed. I would have had a very happy life. The Earth Evacuation Project wouldn't allow a single exception. Every last person they ordered to... Every last person was ordered to board the colony ships. Yes. Anyone who refused had a gun shoved in their face. So let me get this straight. Because people didn't want to go to space, you forced them to go to space at gunpoint? I understand the relevance of trying to save everyone, but you can't truly save someone who doesn't want to be saved, and doing it like that will only make matters worse. Nobody was allowed to stay on Earth, save for a few government officials and soldiers. Because reasons, I guess. But of course, they're, they too were finally being beginning to take off into space. It stands to reason that people will revolt if you resolve to such drastic measures. Yeah, I'm not surprised they did. That's why they were armed. They learned to handle weapons, refined their strategies, collected intelligence, and prepared themselves. I hadn't realized in the time, but I suspected I'd learned how to fight from, uh, from my parents too. Was I able to easily adjust to the military and make my way across the battlefield? So so well because I had some elementary groundwork in place? Probably. Your parents and the people who lived here fought back, didn't they? Probably. 
I'm guessing they left the mountain and went on the offensive before they were overtaken by the army. But even if they did, Shion solemnly whispered, they were few in number, and I doubted they were well equipped. There's no way they could have won in a fight against a legitimate military force. That's why you do guerrilla tactics. That's how you just gotta poke the enemy. You gotta annoy them. I assume most of them de died. I had personally taken part in subjugated guerrilla forces, so it was easy for me to imagine what sort of end most of them met. Is it possible that he could have actually killed his parents at one point? Like, maybe they just couldn't come back home, and by the time they they realized it, he was off in the military, and then he came and maybe killed them. That would make the story really sad. They may well have been the people I knew amongst the droves I had shot dead! See? See? I think of it before the game does! I never looked at the bodies, so it was entirely possible. It was even possible that my parents... Sorry. Huh? Why are you apologizing? I... The project I pushed forward killed so many people. You killed no one! They acted upon what they thought was right. For far more people survived due to the project. It's not something you should fret over. No. I never once felt guilty about the many lives taken in my stead. That's... Uh, that is probably my sin. Sean turned to look at the tiny sprouts dancing in the wind. Um, her face was deadpan. Deadpan with a frying pan. Uh, from a different perspective, Sean's iconic figure looked to be completely... De took a completely different meaning. To those who did not think of her as a savior, those who opposed live, uh, leaving Earth, she was a symbol of everything they hated. But then, the same could be said for anyone. They never get anything done if you want everyone to love you. This is true. At some point, you're gonna get some haters. At some point, you're gonna get some haters. But, I think with that, guys, I'm gonna have to end the episode here. It's nice! It's nice and peaceful, and we get to finally get some alone time with Shion. So, be sure to like in favor if you enjoyed, subscribe, of course, if you feel inclined to, check out some other videos that I've done, I do a lot of stuff, so, be a good person, tip your waitresses, keep moving forward, and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, yo!